and welcome back to my small little library. Um, today we have a video full of reviews. It is time for the October wrap up of 2023. Um, yeah, it has been a really interesting reading month. It has been really, really miss. <laughs> um, I would say hit or miss, but even the hits were like not that hitty, you know. I had a lot of like misses, a lot of bad books, a lot of books that promised something that wasn't delivered. And most of them were like secondhand older horror books or like horror books. Um, some of them just aren't really horror in my opinion, but uh, we're coming to that. So yeah, I did, I think, listen to two audiobooks this month and then the rest I read physically. And yeah, it has been a hell of a month, <laughs> which is quite fitting for October, but you know. Um, but yeah, I did read some really, really bad and weird horror books, which to be honest, you really shouldn't pick up. But you know, I will tell you all about them now and then you can decide if you would like to read those books. The Start makes Another Lake by Stuart Woods. Um, this sounds really, really interesting if you read the blurb. It's about a guy who kind of has like some troubles in his life and he is, um, where well, he gets laid off of his work or kind of fired. He was a journalist and now he works kind of as like a freelance writer. And then he gets this, um, well, the job offer. It comes from his brother-in-law, but um, yeah. He to write like ghostwrite an autobiography um, for like this guy and the brother offers him his little cottage at this lake and you know to get him away um, also get him away from his sister it's like a really weird situation and so a guy comes there and there seems to be some spooky stuff going on and then the book turns into some um, corrupt cop slash incest story which bad just bad all around the story just from the beginning was at times like so incredibly obvious and then other times it's just so dumb the story that you couldn't foresee stuff and then the cop story is just it's so obvious it's it's really dumb and then you have incest over incest over incest i don't know why like older horror book writers um had this incest fetish kind of it's not the first book where incest is, plays like a big part and they do seem to be horror books i think it's really weird i don't know why um it, uh, yeah kind of seems like rural american settings lend to incest i don't know um, i think it's weird personally and um yeah so we have a dead little girl she's actually the only ghost in the story because there's a ghost and it's a little girl um, everything else is kind of like, you know, shitty humans and all of that makes for a pretty shitty story, to be honest. So I give it two stars, because the writing style isn't the worst, just the story really doesn't cut it. And yeah, that was the start for October. I listened to a fabulous audiobook, it's called First Steps. Um, I'm gonna put the cover here for you. But yeah, the, the author is Jeremy De Silver and it's like completely called first steps how upright walking made us human as the title leads on it's a book about the evolution of walking upright what that says about humanity what that means for humanity and the book like really looks at all of the fossils that we have and footprints that we have and all of the evidence and then they kind of talk about how we used to look at that sort of thing and then how but what science tells us now and to what conclusion they have come and the book was incredibly interesting if you like that sort of thing i love that sort of stuff and i'm always up for like a non-fiction audiobook that is about history and all the evidence we have and human evolution incredibly interesting five stars i really like that book and i would recommend if you are into that sort of a theme our topic i would really recommend that book that was one of the best i think so far when it comes to like human evolution and that obviously has like a really really small um special topic it focuses and then we have a reread because i had to do a reread um i don't have a stephen king right now that i haven't read yet that is not 600 pages and um 
horror. Most of the horror ones I own I already read and I didn't want to buy a new one so I did do a reread because obviously I have to read Stephen King in October. Um, so I reread Carrie. I still love this book. Um, yeah, Carrie is one of my favorites. It's one of the first ones I've actually read by him and it has stayed one of my favorites just because I love Carrie. I just love her character. I love how the story progresses, how everything just it's so crazy, you know, but at some point you're like, yeah, I can kind of understand it. <laughs> um, so yeah, one of my favorites. Um, I also like the copy that I have. I don't know why, but these like um, reflective Stephen King covers, they just really talk to me. It's, I don't know. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite Stephen King books. It's a really, really great one afternoon read. It's really not that big. I don't know. It's 280 pages, so really not that big of a book, um, but yeah, one of my favorites, I have to say it, because I think I don't talk, but get generally I think people don't talk often about it, um, because obviously there are the movies, I haven't watched the movies, I'm not much into horror movies, um, even though in this one I obviously know the story, you know, but um, yeah, great story, she kills everybody, and herself, kind of, but she doesn't kill herself, but she gets killed in the end, but um, a girl who really takes revenge to a whole new level. After that I listened to the second audiobook um, for the month and that was Artificial Condition, the second book in the Murderbot series by Martha Wells and um, that was also great. I gave that one four stars. Um, it feels like a little bit of an in-between book but that's fine to be honest. I do enjoy the Murderbot series. I like the kind of like how the character evolves and his struggles and stuff if you think about him not being human at all and actually he, that he wasn't supposed to be that sentient um, but yeah for me the Murderbot series is really, really great I'm currently waiting to get the third, third one on audiobook um, you know they're really small I think the audiobook for the second one was only like three hours so they are a quick read um, and I would recommend the series if you like you know sci-fi and the thought of a robot who was or an android who was designed to kill trying not to kill because he doesn't really enjoy it and um, and yeah he doesn't really enjoy a human interaction I get him on that he's much rather watching the entertainment feed who can't blame him you know um so yeah great book I think they make great audiobooks I don't own the physical copies at some point I will buy them because I do want to own them um, but yeah I at this point just listen to the audiobooks and they're great <laughs> after that we have the pretty much the only yeah it's the only good secondhand horror book that I got. It's not really a horror book, it's more... It's a detective novel coupled with a bit of fantasy aspects and they kind of, you know, play into um, the whole horror trope. But I don't think it's really horror. It's more a scary mystery maybe that isn't really that scary. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we have Dani. She has some rather special abilities. Um, she has an extra finger and with those with that extra finger she can find stuff. And as she was younger, she thought it only worked with water, but then she found oil and made her grandparents really rich in the process. And then she realized, oh, I also can find animals and humans and all of that stuff. And so, um, yeah, you can probably think what that means for her. She really lives a really secure life because she doesn't want to be bothered by people. And then two of the pupils of her sister's classroom vanish into the moor. And yeah, her sister comes to her and asks for help. And that is what the book is about. I gave it four stars. I really like the characters in this book. I like the interaction between them. I like how the special abilities are handled. Also, um, this has a lot to do with Kajun, I think, is the right tribe name. I don't know much about indigenous people in America. I mean, I'm not from America, so I know what's out there, but I don't know any details. And they play a part in here and I I like how they, how it all plays a part um, because it's kind of like, you know, showing how someone can twist their rituals and make them bad even though they weren't in the first place um, just because he's a little bit crazy in the head. Um, but yeah, so that is 
plays kind of a role in here because I don't know much about that I can't really tell anything about that part um, but yeah I really liked it um, if you want to read a Deborah LeBlanc go with it we have another one of hers in a little bit that wasn't good so yeah this one really really great and yeah four stars um, I don't know I think it's a nice a fake detective novel there isn't really a detective in here <laughs> um, but Dani kind of plays the part of detective um, even though that's really not her job so um, yeah great book then I picked one up that I thought sounded like a really great horror book and that is the pet let me tell you does this look like a teenager book I don't know maybe I'm just not with it but it's by Charles L Grant and um, yeah it's a horror book we have a serial killer who targets teens and he cuts them and he kind of slashes them up in like a werewolf style which big part of the story it's it's so dumb you don't really want to think think about it but yeah and then we have our main character who is like a moody teenager a, a guy who doesn't really land with the girls and his parents are teachers and his father is the headmaster at the school he attends and then his mother is an art teacher at the other high school and he pretty much all of the book is him just being woe me everybody dislikes me I don't like anyone everybody's unfair to me life is unfair I really hate this you know he's a teenager but that really makes a bad book to be honest because he well he kills the serial killer and so then he's kind of like you know deemed a hero and at some point you know his parents and some of his friends are like how did you actually do that and then it turns out that he talks to his animal posters he has on his you know wall in his room and the horse comes to life whenever he's really angry at someone and then kills that person the horse he also has a panther and a tiger at his wall but the horse is the one that comes alive and to be fair horses can do a lot of damage but they aren't particularly scary um, and yeah, that books it, it reads like a teenage horror book where someone took a list of like you have to do that to be a scary book and then he worked down on them you know one after the other and it reads really really bad I gave it two stars because I can actually um, realize you I don't know I think maybe a teenager would like it um, I just hate the whole like entitled teenager woe me type of person so yeah I really hated the main character and with that the book was kind of over you know and horses just aren't that scary after that we have actually <laughs> a one star book it got even worse and that is Charmed Life by Bernard Taylor this is supposed to be a horror book our main character his wife and his child died and he you know he grieves and he goes on this journey with his friend around the world you know to grieve and forget life for a little bit and then his way kind of like brings him back to a little country town in England where he met his wife and where the wife's his, his mother-in-law still lives and there he sees someone who looks similar to his wife because obviously this trope has to be in a bad book and yeah it is kind of like half cult book because there are two cults one wants to see him live and the other wants to see him die it's it's dumb it's just really really dumb and then you have the story of his and his wife um, the relationship that they have was doomed from the beginning it really doesn't make any sense um, it's I don't know I don't think there's any sense in the relationship like they don't even spend that much time together and yeah he he has well there was an accident and his one son died and then the wife got pregnant again and she lost the child a few days after birth and then she fell into she had an accident later on i think or it connected to that um she fell into a coma and then at some point she died whilst he also was in a coma and it, so he didn't really um get that you know um he only got to know all, all of those things once he woke up again because he has had a really bad um car accident and the thing is he has a child still that is alive the mother-in-law lied to him about that and it really it's so dumb you know it's like really cliche dumb 
the quotes really don't matter. It's I don't know. It's it's pseudo pseudo pseudo. Oh, what's the English word? It's like it, it it's this kind of philosophical work of like you know do we have our own fates you know or do we not like kind of like you know is when you are born do we already know what the outcome of our life is you know kind of is it preordained or is it not and then this book kind of tries to tie that in with the cult it's a really weird relationship and it doesn't work at all. I didn't like one of the characters. Um, <laughs> there's quite the cast of characters. None of them are really interesting or in any way, you know, is that you feel for them. And so it really doesn't matter. It's a bad book and you shouldn't read it. Then we have the second Deborah LeBlanc, which I sadly didn't like. But I do think that's a really personal preference here. This is called Family Inheritance and we have two siblings. Um, Todd and then his sister Jessica and Jessica has like these special abilities to heal people when she puts a finger on them and then you know she kind of swaps energies and then the, she heals them but it's bad for her mental health and then we have a third guy who's called Eric and his friend brings him people to heal and he really can't take anymore because of his mental health and then Jessica gets the call that her brother is like in a mental hospital because they found him and he's like really paranoid and he hears voices he talks to himself he has like this really you know cliche like the cia is behind me they are you know they have listening devices everywhere they will hurt me you know all of that and it seems to be all a, a kind of demon this also has to do with the kajun um which she has Kajun roots and her brother, like those two, and the other guy, I think, as well. Um, but yeah, so I can't really tell you ma more um, because I think it it's ne negates reading the story. But the thing is, I didn't like the characters and I found the scenes with Todd and him hearing voices and stuff to be so overwhelming and so over the top that I did not enjoy reading them. So I skip read, skip read it and, you know, finished it. But for me, it was just too much, which is why I gave it two stars. I cannot give it anything better, but I don't think it's a bad book. I just think that I didn't connect with the characters and so I didn't connect with their suffering and that, you know, you have to like the characters to make this a good book. And this one, as well as the first one, this one is also more like, it's not really scary. It's more like mystery, thrillery kind of stuff you know like psychological horror but also a little bit like too mellow for real horror in my opinion but yeah if you like that kind of stuff pick this up it seems to be a really really good book otherwise for me i just didn't click with the characters and then the last book we have is thankfully again a five star book this one i got for my birthday because my birthday was in october and uh, this is the sherlock holmes classic stories collection from barnes and nobles by Arthur Conan Doyle, obviously. <laughs> um, and yeah, this one, this book has like his favorite stories in here, um, a little bit of like the most important stories. I didn't know all of them. I knew a few, but not all of them. I love the Sherlock Holmes stories. I mean, I don't really need to tell you what they're about, right? But I think he's just such a fascinating character and just a really, really cool, enjoyable character, especially also Watson that I really love these stories and so yeah a third of the book is just the Hounds of Baskerville and the rest the nine other stories are like you know short short comb stories but yeah I like this edition I don't really fancy these braid edges but I really like the rest of the editions so um yeah great birthday present if you wanna gift it to somebody um it's a really really nice copy um but yeah that one is the last one and yeah, five stars. Those were all of the books I've read in October. As you can see, I didn't have the best reading month. A lot of these were just like, you know, meh, <laughs> not the best. Um, but you know, there's always November to make that all better. And so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my reviews of all of these books. And yeah, if you want to see more of me, subscribe, maybe leave a like, comment, and yeah, hopefully I will see you in the next video.